Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is um, another in our series of the Product Design and Manufacturing Collection webcasts. Today we're going to cover frame analysis and fatigue study in Inventor and Nasdran in CAD. Jim Swain is going to be your host. He's one of our applications consultants here at Synergis. Before we get started, um, should you have any questions during the webcast, please feel free to use the question panel on the right hand side, type them in and we'll get to as many as we can. This webcast is being recording, recorded and what we'll do is send out the recording to you following the webcast so you have it for reference and to share with other folks on your team. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Well, thank you, Ellen. Good morning, everyone. I appreciate you uh, taking in time to join me on this probably the last day for many of us before a holiday season. I uh, figure we do this one a little bit early, that way you can uh, watch this or at least have it up on the screen till, uh, till you have to have an opportunity to then head on out. So this one won't be real long, we're keeping the spirit of the past uh, webinars. We're going to be talking at a high level, we're not going to be going deep into any of the software. The idea again is to give you a feel for what capabilities we now have so you can take advantage of them in your everyday life, or at least your design life. So, on the assumption that I was going to have your attention for about 30 seconds, and I used up 20 of it there, let's go right to the chase. So, what we're hitting here in general, what all of these seminars have been on, sorry, webinars, different word, is how are we going to use this to help us be smarter? It's, the things that we design, they're used out there in the real world. We don't have the time or the money to make physical prototypes, especially when you're back at that conceptual phase. I know that we were uh, changing designs as fast as we were getting prototypes out of our model shop at my last job. We still had to do testing, so we were getting some good information for it, but it was always a week or so behind what the current design was. And this was in something like a 16 week total design cycle. So a week design, sorry, a week behind in the design really, really wasn't uh, helping us a whole lot. It was giving us background data, not current data. So simulation on the computer is one way of getting ahead of that curve. Ability to take your concept and run analysis right then and there on your desktop is key, I think, in the current world. What the product design and manufacturing collection has done with 2018 release is give us some new capabilities, things that we couldn't do before just with Inventor Professional. So we can now do buckling studies, didn't have that capability before. Heat transfer, again, didn't have any uh, capability at all in Inventor for those. Fatigue, well, we could do stress and strain analysis in Inventor and then from there go and uh, interpolate off of the uh, the SN curves or whatever data you had for the various materials to see if your uh, design was likely to succeed. So the addition of uh, NASTRAN NCAT really has helped us out there. Now back to the regular uh, scheduled webinar. So if you've attended any of these others, this will be very familiar. That's me. I'm an applications consultant with Synergist Technologies. Before starting at Synergist, I was a design engineer and a CAD manager for a couple of different companies. I lived most recently in the consumer products world, which is why we had such a short design time and uh, well, release cycle. Also, heavy duty trucks, we were worried about longevity, definitely. Uh, I have degrees in mechanical engineering but I'm not a professional engineer, and anything that I uh, say and do in these seminars, really this is based on my experience and where I would apply it to my design as a design engineer. It's not advice on your designs. It is not in any way to be construed as a uh, design guide for something you're specifically designing, and uh, Synergis or myself will not, do not have any legal responsibility for anything you design. How's that for a disclaimer in this holiday season? So, frame analysis. Here's what I uh, tell people when they ask what frame analysis is. It's a tool to determine the strength of a design created with structural members, structural steel, what have you. Short version, tool to estimate a steel frame strength. Now I say steel frame because inventor, the content center and such are steel 
pieces. You can change the material, but you're still working with steel cross sections at this release. How does this help us? Well, things mounted on skids, whether it's motor driven pieces, you got vibrations coming into play as well, or just heavy equipment that's designed to be uh, fabricated in your facility, hauled to the customers, installed in site that way. Enclosures, racks, smaller uh, size frames than what I think of for skid mounted equipment. But again, similar type of thing where it's going to be uh, either assembled at the factory and shipped or assembled in place, but you've got uh, various frame members holding some kind of weight and having to deal with that, having to deal with the, the rigors of the field. Today, at least for frame, uh, we will be talking about both Inventor Professional and Nastran and CAD both part of the product design and manufacturing collection. Yes, I'm going fairly fast this just because I know people have other things on their mind and on this Friday before the holidays. So let's jump right into it. Comparing Inventor to Nastran NCAD. So Inventor Professional, we have frame analysis tools built into it. It's based off the, uh, the robot, uh, structural analysis package that's in the Autodesk uh, set of tools. So we have a lightweight version of it in the Inventor. And when I say lightweight, it's easy to use, easy to apply. It's not intended to be used for such as designing a uh, building to withstand uh, hurricane loads or other building code requirements. It's more on that skid level, that rack mounted equipment level, uh, things like I described uh, just a few moments ago. For the NASTRAN, we've got a bit more. We still have uh, beams, but we can also uh, add other two node elements, line elements. Uh, there's various names for it, and I'm not going to say the wrong one out loud because I know I will if I just tried. But tubes, pipes, as well as beams. You can import the uh, model from the frame generator from Inventor, so you don't have to rebuild your framework. And that was always time consuming for me for older uh, finite element analysis software. Uh, there is a difference between the way the two softwares handle things. Inventor is more classic beam theory applied where you're connecting beams and then that's being solved using classic beam theory where Nastran is still a finite element analysis. You're just working with beam elements. Uh, they have different stiffness properties, but your design is a series of beams connected to each other. And of course, there is the Autodesk comparison website between the two. So let's take a look at this. So here's the cross section definition from this uh, screenshots from Nastran. And I want to point out, and sorry, here's the one for. Uh, for Inventor, you can see the difference between the two in that the Nastran one, which I, well, I really hope comes up on the top in just a moment. Hopefully I didn't mess up my PowerPoint slide deck. The Inventor one is a uniform beam. It is a constant cross section. You can select from the families of various uh, structural steel members, square tubes, rectangular tubes, uh, angles, channels, I-beams but it is definitely a uniform for the entire length of the beam. You can specify the material properties. It's still working off the steel cross section, so be careful there. And you can build your framework on uh, various lines and edges of a solid model. So you can build your frame around your design. Nastran NCAD, and no, that didn't come back up to the front. Okay, Nastran NCAD, also can bring in those properties from those beams that were placed in Inventor. But you can also say that the elements that are placed on those beams have a different cross section at the front and the rear of the element. So you can build a tapered beam. Big difference there. Now for skids, maybe not so much. For frameworks, we tend to stay in the small area, so we work with the constant. But that taper beam part does start allowing the uh, Nastran NCAD to go outside of uh, what I would consider the skid mounted range. 
So if you find yourself doing things along those lines, larger scale equipment, Master and NCAD has the tools then to get you there. In addition to beams, I can specify bars and pipes in NASTRAN, which are really just uh, special cases of, uh, of cross sections. With Inventor, start it with the frame generator typically, but I could also manually assemble a framework based on using the content center. And that part's important. The frame analysis tools in Inventor need to start from a uh, content center piece of, uh, of steel. And I'm just going to start calling it piece of steel for the rest of this discussion. That's where it's getting the bending uh, properties, the cross-sectional properties for the beams. It's looking up in content center. So if you have your own custom, you can add them to the content center. If you need a special Z section or a, a hat cross section, you can add those to content center. You put in the cross-section uh, properties and that's what it uses for the beam analysis. That's how it knows how stiff the uh, shape is. Run the frame analysis, write in Inventor. Again, that's a, a subset of the uh, robot tool. And you can uh, apply loads and constraints and then get uh, results such as deflections and stresses. That's available with Inventor Professional. Results include displacements, forces, bending moments, and such, all the classic results from uh, classic beam theory. Nastran NCAD, here is an example. You see the browser, that was imported from that same inventor frame analysis. All the beams were therefore set up directly from those same properties. You can also manually add uh, beam elements within your design. But as a design engineer, no, I'm probably going to go right from my, uh, my frame. So very nice workflow, uh, just as good as what's in the uh, frame analysis within Inventor. Similar type of results. Here I'm showing maximum stress within the beam. Uh, again, you can see uh, constraints being added, various deflections as a result. Uh, okay, thought I had a blank slide in there, guess not. So that's a look at what you can do with frames and beams. Nastrain NCAD also will go a lot further with use of those special types of elements. Uh, you can use those to connect uh, outlying bodies to apply, uh, uh, sorry, moments to the overall design. They use those as tools for simulating bolt loadings within design, various uh, connectors type of things, adding springs to design, so on. Things that aren't really uh, included in the inventor finite element analysis. Moving beyond framework, and I will take a look to see if there are any questions at the end. I am moving into the framework because, again, I know people have other things to do this time of year. Fatigue. I resisted the chance to put some really bad jokes in here. We'll just go with what the engineering definition of fatigue is. It's taking a look at your design and trying to decide how it's long it's going to live when you've got loads that fluctuate over time. Or trying to cut out the, uh, the bigger words. <laughs> but is this thing going to last? The load's not constant. What's going to happen? And especially if you're talking a material that doesn't really have a good fatigue life. How long can we hope for this design to last? How many cycles? With this, we are back at the NASTRAN only level of things. So NASTRAN, I can do fatigue based on uh, vibration analysis. I can also do multi-axis fatigue uh, based on the various loadings uh, that would come from a static study. And then you apply the different uh, material properties. How well does it live up to uh, fatigue uh, over its life? And what you didn't see come up in the background there is the uh, classic uh, 
cycle versus stress level life expectancy curves for materials. And that's the material property. So aluminum will be different than steel, various grades of both will be different and so on. The results that you get, as you can see here, red being bad, universal. I've got a bad design for the uh, loadings indicated here, is the expected life level and then also where is the damage going to be likely to take place in your design? Where are the high stress levels? What's going to give first? Where would you be looking for cracks to start developing or other signs of failure starting to occur? So this is type of thing that we could do straight from the stress analysis but will require us to go and manually look up the fatigue information and decide how our stress levels compare if you uh, save off in your material database the uh, fatigue information, it's there waiting for you. If the software is coming up with the stress levels, it's going to do the comparison for you. All right, so just to sum things up here, like I said, this was a very quick pass through today. Inventor, at the frame level, straight beams. It's also classical beam theory. Quick, easy to use, but Inventor all does not have any fatigue study if you need to go there. Nastran NCAD, it brings in the ability to have something beyond just a uniform cross-section beam. It brings in the ability to have something other than just structural steel elements. Uh, you can go outside of those much easier. And also Nastran NCAD has tools for doing uh, studies on your life expectancy for design. So at this point, I'll take a quick look and see if we've got any questions posted. I'm not seeing any. Ellen, are you seeing any on your end of things? I'm not. Okay. So, well, my guess is people are already getting ready for the holiday, so we'll assume that there aren't going to be any questions. Coming up as our next step in this, this is the sixth, and from the inventor, Nastran Direct Level, this was the final webinar on the new simulation capability, so how we could make our design smarter by getting that simulation in at the beginning. Still to come, next Friday, this one might be longer. I'll give you a heads up there. This one's going to be taking a look at what's available in Fusion 360. Bit of a spoiler, Fusion 360 simulation tools are really aimed at us. They are definitely aimed at us design engineers, designers for product because it's got a lot of the capabilities of Nastran and NCAD, but at the simplified level so I can quickly do an analysis, check an idea, maybe check a couple of different concepts and choose a design direction and keep moving. That, in my opinion, is the way the uh, software is uh, developing. So we'll take a look at those various capabilities, how I might apply them as a design engineer, given my background, and uh, where we would go from there. As far as training, we offer both classes on the Inventor Simulation Tools and Nastran NCAD Tools. We will be developing tool uh, classes for the Fusion 360, so keep an eye out for those. And of course, these recordings, as Ellen said, these will be uh, sent out to you who are registered attendees, and I believe these will also be posted on social media, Ellen? They will. All right. Well, there we go. I hit my, wow, I was aiming for 30 minutes or less, and I overachieved. So hopefully I didn't... Uh, didn't talk too fast, but if you have any questions, reach out at, to us here at Synergis. And we'd be glad to help you out with what would be the right tool for you in a given situation. With that, thank you for your time. Ellen, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending, and thank you, Jim, for your presentation today. We will make this available to you. Um, we'll send you an email. It will be available um, via all our social channels, and we'll post it to our YouTube channel. Um, and there is a playlist specific to this. So with that, I hope everybody has a great holiday, and we'll see hopefully all of you then next Friday for Jim's next webcast. Thanks again.